Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. It is a chilly one today. Hey, for those of you reading temperatures in Fahrenheit, it is 12 degrees. There's a little bit of a breeze which brings it down to 3. So she is a chilly willy one. Today we have got a very special car to show you. Something that we picked up at the auction that we're very, very disappointed in. Stay tuned. So first of all, right now, I am using my phone. Why? Because it's still dark out a little bit, and my Samsung Galaxy S8 is excellent in low light conditions. Unlike the GoPro, it has a hard time focusing uh, very well uh, in these low light conditions. So anyways, last week, we bought four vehicles at the auction, and in my last upload, I gave you an indication of which, they, which ones they are, but one of them, is a very special car. Why do we call it special? Because when we buy from this particular auction, Mannheim, they use a grading system on their vehicles of one to five, and they rated this particular vehicle at 3.1. So we bid accordingly. It's the 2012 Kia Forte. And before I flash the camera over to it, I wanna let you know that this car is a 2012. It only has 107,000 kilometers on it, and uh, other than some of the issues I'm going to point out, seems to be a pretty decent car, but certainly not worthy of a 3.1 rating. My guess, at best, a 1.5 out of 5. Let's take a look. So this is the 2012 Kia Forte, and at first glance, it looks pretty cool. But as you get closer, if you take a look at the hood, you can see the spray marks with a rattle can paint job. When you come up to the windshield trim, you can see overspray. And this piece of molding is supposed to be black. This whole car looks like it has been rattle canned all the way around. It's missing badges on the back. It's got a crack in the back bumper. Although it has four almost new studded snow tires, it's got some black faux carbon fiber plastic hubcaps. As we come around to the front of the grill, somebody has taken out the factory grill that lets you know that this is a Kia and replaced it with window screen. Isn't that great? Look, window screen. But like I said, overall, the car looks good. But why am I complaining, you might ask? Well, the biggest thing is, is because they rated this car at 3.1, even though the description had said that this car was totally painted, like a complete repaint, it said that the paint job was acceptable. Now, would you call that acceptable? Or the missing paint on the door acceptable? Or the swipe marks of the rattle can on the hood acceptable? I know I certainly wouldn't, and I didn't, so I called the auction and let them know that I was unhappy. Now, we were able to buy this car for a decent price, but the description is our eyes and ears to these vehicles when we're not at the auction. Had we been physically there and saw this car, we certainly would not have bid on it. However, at the end of the day, we were able to make an arrangement with the auction so that we can sell this car for $24.95 as is. That's right folks, this is a 2012 with 60,000 miles, about 107,000 kilometers, and it's a manual transmission. It does have power windows and locks. It also has radio controls on the steering wheel. This thing is well equipped for winter with four studded snow tires, and guess what? At $24.95, it's a no dicker sticker, and we're selling it as is. So I don't think you can go too far wrong with this if you can get by the paint job. So one of the other vehicles that I showed you in the last upload was this 2009 Chevy Malibu behind me. Now this is a 2LT Malibu, which basically means it's got a lot of extra creature comfort, such as the heated leather seats, the sunroof, the bigger wheels and tires, uh, you know, a few extra things inside. 
When we brought it in to check it over, we found a few things that were wrong with it that kind of led us to think, is this something that we want to sell on the lot based on how much money we're going to have to put into it? So let's go over a few of the things that we found wrong with it and then we'll go over the pricing of those items versus the value of the car. So at first glance, this 2009 Malibu is in really good condition. You know, the fact that it's black serves to be a retail selling color. It should sell very well once it's cleaned up. So let's take a look at some of the things that we found as we were working away at it. A couple of the good things are, is we noticed that it had fairly new brakes on it. Although they look rusty from here, I think that's just from sitting on the lot. We come around back and we had to put some rear pads on it. These cars came equipped with plastic rocker panels. And as you could probably tell, of all the dirt falling out of it, the rocker panel on the inside edge there is completely gone on both sides. As we look out the windshield, you'll see over here that the windshield is cracked and gonna to have to be replaced. And with a little extra light, you'll notice we had to put a new strut in it. So because we've put a new strut in it, and as you can see, we are putting four brand new snow tires on it, we did outweigh the cost versus the value of the vehicle and felt that this car with 220,000 kilometers, which is probably somewhere in the vicinity of about 150,000 miles, is probably worth, you know, $29.95 at its best day. So we have to outweigh the cost of the windshield, $275, the cost of the strut, a couple hundred bucks, the rear pads, 30 bucks, and the cost of fixing the rocker panels, well, if we do it ourselves, we're probably looking at maybe somewhere in the vicinity of $50 or $60, maybe $80 in materials, and a few hours, probably three or four hours of our labor. If we send it out, you're looking at probably seven or $800, certainly wouldn't be worth it. So at the end of the day, the overall value of the car and what it's going to cost us to put into it versus you know what we had paid for it, we still think there's a little bit of money left on the table to be able to sell this on the lot and uh, have a good, reliable vehicle. As of right now, my mom is driving the black Hyundai Veloster, and that car just has all season tires on it. So what we have chosen to do is get her into this 09 Malibu for the winter. That's why we're putting the winter tires on it. We'll get the windshield fixed. We've already got the strut in. The brakes are all looked after. And in the spring, we'll have depreciated that vehicle a little bit based on her use that we'll still probably be able to sell this thing for somewhere around $29.95 uh, and, and still have a very good reliable car. So that's the plan. We're gonna get the Veloster back on the lot and she's gonna be driving this for the winter and uh, it should be a really good car for her because of the options that it has. Heated leather seats is a must if you've got leather. So she'll be, all, she'll be doing all right with this one and uh, so that's the plan to fix up the Malibu and then resell it again in the spring when the better weather comes. One thing I haven't done in a long time was give you any updates on the 36 Dodge project and the reason for that is there's really no updates to give. We had talked about what we're going to do with that motor because of the little bit of a vibration that it has and I think at the end of the day when time permits we likely will pull that motor out and do a uh, little rebuild and a real refresh on it, making sure that uh, the crank and all that stuff is all balanced out. As far as my car, the 79 Chrysler Cordova, well, I think what I have decided to do this winter is I am going to take the intake manifold off and either port it or replace it with something a little more high flowing. We're also going to uh, put some headers on it some shorty headers to help get that uh, exhaust flow out of the engine quicker and uh, free up some horsepower that way. I'm also going to put an H pipe in the exhaust again to help you know equalize the pressure on the exhaust and, and get those uh, exhaust gases out a lot quicker so that when dyno time comes in the spring hopefully we'll be able to push that thing in upwards of 300 horsepower. I think it's there. A lot of people that I talk to think that it's there and we're going to make it happen. Guys, as we bring this video to a close, I want to thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing on this channel. It really means a lot to me. And if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to hit that red subscribe button down in the bottom corner with the bell notification so that you get notified when I upload a new video. Contest is still on. 1,000 subscribers by January 31st, and I'm giving away 
$1,000 cash. I really want to make sure that we can get this channel up to the point where uh, at some point it becomes monetized, which means I can put a little more money, a little more effort into some projects and some builds and have a lot of fun with you guys. T-shirts and hoodies are still on sale. The deadline for Christmas is coming close. I do have some on hand, so if you uh, don't think you can make it, send me an email. Uh, my email address is in the description box, or you can order from bonfire.com, which is the first link in the description box below. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. We will see you in the next upload.